Thank you, O oh God, for your goodness, for your mercy. Thank you for the anointing that breaks the yoke, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God, that when I'm weak, you are strong, O oh God. Lord, so wax strong on the inside of me for the praise of your glory as I bring forth your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. amen. Praise God. I thought uh, this evening to talk a little bit about uh, cults. <laughs> praise God. As to what is a cult, what actually is defined as a cult? You know, most people kind of throw around that word when uh, they get disillusioned with the church or uh, they have to walk away because of sin in their lives or uh, they just want to choose another course of living. And uh, for, because of this dissatisfaction or this um, annoyance or provocation, uh, they might say the church is a cult. But most people don't have any idea of what a cult is. And they certainly don't know the dictionary definition of, of a cult. Um, normally, they hear about a cult through the sensationalism that comes from the media with uh, particular kinds of people, such as Charles Masson. And I'm not going to get into all of his stuff, but if you're interested in it, you can Google him or David Koresh or even Jim Jones um, or some kind of satanic uh, sect of one kind or another or even um, uh, political parties. You know, now in political parties, uh, people throw the word cult at a political party, you know, if if someone, for example, tends to vote a certain kind of way, and most people are on the opposite side of that, then surely the people that are voting in that particular party are, are cultists or following a cult. Um, you know, when people throw that word around, what they're basically is saying that how can you be so stupid or be so ignorant? to be a part of that particular organization. You know, in that organization, they're brainwashing you. In that organization, they are telling you what to do, and, and you can't think for yourself. And so they uh, poise themselves to be in a position to be so much smarter than you are and so much wiser than you. And, uh, and, so, and they are definitely a current word in our culture today. They are woke. And uh, how can you be so stupid as to allow someone else to lead you? I'm never demand you that they are trying to lead someone uh, by their, their conversation about something that they are walking away from. And one of the reasons why uh, people walk away, because there's nothing wrong with walking away and choosing another course of life. The problem is, is when you make... Uh, the experience that you might have had, that experience negative for other people. And even worse than that, you make it evil. In Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. Verse 13, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Lest any of you be hardened uh, because sin makes you deaf, dumb, and blind. Uh, sin makes you angry. Uh, sin makes you blame other people. Uh, sin causes you uh, to be jealous and, and say things that are not true but they're true to you because uh, mostly because when you walk away from something and you remember the good that was done, uh, the things that you profited by, it, I can't imagine you saying anything negative. And I'm going to go on with this because I've had that experience before about the place that you left. Uh, but if you're trying to hide, the Bible says that God so loved the world and people don't come to the light. And when people don't want to come to a light sometimes about issues, then they color the whole organization or the experience negative or evil. 
But by way of definition, and I got this definition right out of a dictionary, a cult is a system. Is it's a it's systemic? It's a system of religious beliefs. So that is not necessarily negative or evil. It's a system of religious belief, devoted attachment to a person or a principle. And you know, one of the greatest and the most uh, famous cult leaders that have ever come to this earth is, of course, Jesus Christ. I mean, he was, he, he came and instituted a system, uh, systemic, of a new way of relating to God, a new way of worship, a new way of understanding the kingdom of God and its ramifications for our lives. So when you talk about a cult, that is not negative in and of itself. Now, obviously, there have been cults that have been negative and or evil. But life is negative. <laughs> and life can be very evil. So when we sum up the whole total of it, you know, when um, Israel stood before uh, Pharaoh, uh, Joseph's father, he said, my days have been long and my days have been evil. And he had lived 120 years because a lot of things had went on in his life. But at the end of our journey, with all of his negativity and all of its uh, evil, uh, we're going to stand before God and we're going to look back and we're going to say to God, my soul, look back and wonder how I got over but we're going to understand how we get over. We get over through and by the grace of God. And it said religious belief. Religion is a belief in acceptance of God or gods with the emotion or passion and mora morality connected therein. So that's what religion is. Religion is a belief in accepting because some people don't know. Some people think they only believe in God, uh, the one God, but they don't understand just as Joshua uh, told the folks, look here. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You can serve the, the gods on the other side. So there are gods in this world, whether we recognize it or understand it or not. And we, because we're not so woke, we don't know that we're doing it. Because <laughs> there's a proper woke and there's an improper one. So we don't even understand sometimes that we're serving other gods. And I thought I would... Uh, just bring this word in for emphasis, sect, S-E-C-T, is a religious denomination, a body of believers who unite in holding some particular views. So uh, my particular views over here may differ from your particular views over there. And I think at the end of this age, God will decide which particular views uh, was about him as opposed to the doctrine of man. And to be honest with you, uh, I don't think there is a church uh, that exist in our world that don't have some doctrine of a man in it. Because when you go back to the, the history of churches, they, for the most part, they all have fathers. Someone birthed that particular kind of religion, religious denomination in our world today. So it's hard to move away because we're just human. We are just flesh. And First John, this is one of the biggest cults, and this is the one that I walked away from. And I didn't realize how much, uh, uh, how, how uh, let me put it this way, how uh, 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 cultish, thank you, how cultish it was. I didn't realize that I was being brainwashed, that I was being bamboozled. I didn't realize that I was being programmed and indoctrinated. One of the biggest cults that's against God that exists in our, it is total polar 
opposite God <laughs> is the world. And when you walk away from it, your eyes are open to see that you're in a cult. <laughs> At least that's what I realized, that I was being programmed, that I was being indoctrinated, and I was being brainwashed against God. I mean, it's, you're talking about systemic. It's the, some, not all, but some scientists, professors, celebrities. Oh, are you for real? <laughs> teachers, the culture, the food I eat. <laughs> All of it is designed. The museums, the history books, all of it is, it's a cult. And it's systemic. And it's designed for me not to come to God. It's designed for me not to know him not to follow him. And there is a God over this system, this cult. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father... It said the love him. of the Father. And let me tell you something. I love the world. I was brainwashed. I lived for it. I, I received their doctrines and their teachings. They totally dictated my thought life because when I was four or five years old, my mother planted me, my mother and my father planted me into a system. <laughs> and from there, they began to program how I thought, not only about other people and other cultures and other nations and other people, they systematically turn me or try to turn me as much as they could against God. Save the fact that there were churches back in the day that stood strong for their belief and their understanding of the purpose of God in the lives of individual people on this earth. So it said, love the world. For all that's in the world, continue, Keturah, in verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. Oh, did we lust in our flesh? Were we covered this in our flesh? Did we not want to not know, have what everybody else had? Were we not jealous? Didn't we, 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 we protested because we wanted equality. We wanted the, the neighbor next door to make the same amount of money and have the same kind of car. And, the, and the, if I had two and a half children, then they needed to have two and a half children and a white picket fence. It's all programming, and it genders to the lust of the flesh. Continue. And the lust of the eyes. We couldn't get enough. We couldn't see enough. Thank God that God ordered in our natural bodies the mechanism of sleep. Or we would keep our eyes open 24 hours a day. As it is, we almost do that anyway because we cannot go with so many things to, uh, to take our attention away. So we have less and less sleep and we get less and less peace because we don't have the sleep that's necessary in order for us to wake up in peace. Continue. And the pride of life. And the pride of life, because the cult called the world convinces us that we are not going to die. They say, you are not going to die. Even though God's world or cult, if you want to put it that way, because it's a system, says you will die. And the thing about it, you don't even know when you're going to die. You don't even know how you're going to die. But the death rate is one per person, and you will die. But we are convinced. And then when we were, uh, we were also convinced when we, they could not, they, we realized, oh, yeah, you're going to die because our parents die or our brothers die or our siblings die or our babies die. They say when you die, there is no accountability. There is no creator. You are not standing before judgment seat. You're just going to die and go into the ground, and that's going to be that. So they say live 
and be merry. Drink, live, and be merry, because tomorrow you're going to die. But there's no judgment, see? You're talking about a cult. And when I walked away from that cult, I just thank and praise God. They had me. They almost had me. Save. God has decided in himself that I would be born again, taking counsel from no man. He decided that I would be saved. He also decided that my heart would be turned to accept salvation and go into another cult. And all the cults that I'm in or go in are designed by God. Because if I have a heart that want to know me, no cult can keep that from happening. All it can do is either cause me to see or cause me not to see certain things that I am to see or not to see. It causes me to understand that only God is perfect. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 through 4, this is a huge cult, and it has someone in charge of it. <laughs> Someone's in charge of this cult. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 3 to 4. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds the of The God of this world has blinded the minds of those that are disobedient. God doesn't keep anybody in his cult that don't want to be kept in it. That's not the kind, because my God is a gentleman. My God, that same door that you came in goes out the other way. The experiences that we have in life are learning experience. So, a sect, a religious denomination. So, in the days of Jesus, there were sects, or some people will consider them cults, that existed in the days of Jesus. Acts 5, verse 17 through 18. Oh, before I go there, uh, the system that's in the world, that we are not aware of it, some of it, that's cultic, has a label. It's called humanism. And in the, in the world, in that world, in that cult, man is supreme, not God. So you worship yourself. You're talking about cult-ish. That, now, that's cultish. When you worship yourself. In Acts chapter 5, verse 17 through 18. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees. So you had a group there, and I'm not going to finish reading it, just to point out to you. He had a group there called the Sadducees. And, you know, we make a joke and say, they were sad, you see. And, but the, the thing about it, and, and it's not too off the mark, because people that are miserable are bitter. They're sad. And so they don't want other people either to succeed or profit. And so, therefore, they're naysayers. They say, don't go there because I couldn't hang, and I'm going to make sure no one else does either. So this sect or this cult was called Sadducees. They were sad, and they all knew that there was a new cult leader in town called Jesus. <laughs> and they could see with their eyeballs that these people, some of them, were being swayed by this cult leader, Jesus, to, to consider them, I mean, to consider Jesus as the a new leader or the way to show them who God really was. And so they were sad, you see. And so they participated in an election 
to bring down Jesus. And I went through that last week, the biggest election ever. And so these people were assembled and were part of a systemic system to bring down the new leader who said that he came from the bosom of God. And he also said he was the son of God. And he said, no man has seen God but me. And they were very upset with him. So Jesus had to contend with this cult or sect doing his ministry on this earth. In Acts 15, verse 5. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying. So there was another group called the Pharisees. Now, the Pharisees and the Sadducees didn't get along, but they found a mutual enemy, Jesus. I'm amazed at how people don't get along until they find a mutual enemy. And then all of a sudden, they like Herod and Pilate, they, they were friends from that time forward. So it's amazing to me when I look out. I said to myself, what would this person over here have in common with this person over here? Especially when they despised each other. And then I realized, oh, that person. <laughs> now I see why that person is hanging out with this person who they previously despised and talk, talked about. That's how it goes. So these groups, they found a common target in Jesus. And so therefore, they worked together to bring him down. In Acts 26, verse 5. Which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. So they, even Paul himself or saw it before he was Paul. He was a Pharisee, and that's one of the reasons why he persecuted the Lord, because the Lord was going to bring in a new way of worship. The, the Lord Jesus was going to bring on a new way of seeing God. Uh, uh, the Lord Jesus was going to bring in a new way of serving God. In other words, there was going to be interaction between us and an, an invisible God. And not only that, we were going to be accountable to that invisible God. So a cult is a system of religious belief. So at some point in history, guess what was considered a cult? The Catholic Church. <laughs> the Catholic Church was considered a cult for years. So everybody has their turn at being considered a cult. Okay, the Protestant churches, the Baptists and the Methodists, they were all considered to be cults or cultish. Same difference. Pentecostal churches, you already know. Speaking in tongues, are you for real? Divine healing, unership, cult. <laughs> Hinduism, cult. Buddhist, cult. Islam, cult. Uh, cult. House churches, come on now. Yeah. You were in a house church, you were straight up in a cult. Come on now. <laughs> and you dare not listen to the cult leader of a house church. Come on. Uh, church with walls. Church without walls. <laughs> cult. <laughs> so what church is it a cult or have not been known to be a cult? A cult in some time in history. Ordained cult. Because people say, you don't need letters because Jesus didn't have letters, nor did the disciples have letters. Cult, you go to a cemetery, cult. Seminary, seminary well, cemetery too, I always mix them up, and I don't yeah. think for uh, no, no bad reason. That's right. Not ordained. Now, how in the world you going to be following somebody that's not ordained by anybody, but that person right. you follow, that person isn't a, a cult leader, but somebody else is. That person hasn't even been ordained. Nobody recognizes them, and you follow them. I mean, that's, that's a lot, okay? Cult. It doesn't matter. It's cult. <laughs> Street preachers, cult. <laughs> Mormons, oh, you all right? Come on now. Jehovah Witness, cult. Seven-day Adventists, cult. 
What church has not been known in some time in history to be a cult? Quakers, cult, Amish, oh, you already know, <laughs> cult, and it goes up because most of these organizations have a father over them. It's interesting. Very, very interesting. All of them, all of them, Scientology, all of them. Cult, 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 cult. But the biggest cult of all is the world. We live in a kingdom of cults. In Luke chapter 6, verse 43. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. So a corrupt tree cannot bring forth good fruit. And a good tree cannot bring forth corrupt fruit. So you have to judge a cult by its fruit. That's the sign of whether or not it has, how to word it, an attachment in God. You, you, you have to be very careful when you go around calling a church, an organization, a man or woman of God, a cult, because the Holy Spirit does not take kindly to that because that work that man or woman of God is his work so he doesn't take kindly to people that call things they don't understand or don't agree with or can't get with or can't do it or rather sin than carry a cross do you know a lot of people call a church a cult because they don't want to carry a cross. They want to either go back to the big cult or experience that cult for themselves. These are people that grow up in church. They say it can't be as cultish as this, and they don't understand what a cult is. In Luke chapter 6, verse 39, and he spoke a parable to them, can the blind lead the blind? Will they not fall into the ditch? A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. So if indeed I am a cult leader, I expect the people that are following me to be like me. <laughs> so I'm not saying negative or positive. I'm just saying to you, Jesus said they should be like their teacher. But if I'm a cult leader and I'm bringing forth and I'm a good tree, I cannot bring forth corrupt fruit. It's impossible. But people would have you think that because 2 Thessalonians verse uh, chapter 3, verse 11 and 15, this is why people would have you to believe that. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. They're busybodies. Now, I'm not talking about they're not having a job. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not using that scripture to, to speak to that. Busybodies, they do nothing in the church. They don't serve other people. And then when they do serve, is with motive. It's to say, see, See what I do? See how good I am? So they got time. Because anyone that has a real life with God, and even a real life in the natural, you know what they don't have time to be? A busy body in other men's affairs. They certainly are not trying to dictate the tenets of a church such as our minds. And other people, my church in this area has been in existence for 32 years. And so the proof, the, the proof is in the pudding through the lives of the people that the doctrine 
has touched. And the, that doctrine, if it's embraced by the person that's under the sound of my voice, I can assure you they will not bring forth corrupt fruit. That's why sin is always in the picture. Sin is always uh, hiding itself in motive, and it hides itself in blaming other people. That's how, that's how sin works. In verse 15 in the same chapter. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. That's verse 15. But that's a nice scripture to know, but that's not what I want, but that's fine. First Timothy 5, 13. And with all they learned to be idle, wandering about from house to house, not only idle, but tattlers also, and busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. Scripture said they wander about from house to house, talking about talking about people that are actually trying to give their lives to serve the Lord. And I've been in the ministry for over 30 years, over 40 years, and have given my entire life for service. Not with lip service. I actually paid the cost to be the boss. But they warned about from house to house, talking about things that they should not and receiving upon themselves damnation. And they think it's not going to happen because it doesn't happen right away. Because what a man sows, he reaps. In Jeremiah chapter 35, verse 2, let's look at a, another cult leader in Scripture. Go into the house of the Rechabites and speak unto them, and bring them into the house of the Lord, into one of the chambers, and give them wine to drink. Then I took Jazaniah, the son of Jeremiah, the son of Habazaniah, and his brethren, and all his sons, and the whole house of the Rechabites. And he said he brought them into the house of the Lord, and he told them, they set before them. So the father had told them, they said, don't do what people are going to try to make you do because I've given you a set of instruction and you are to keep them. And when you give uh, your sons and daughters a set of instruction to keep and they keep them, that's a real good cult leader. <laughs> so when Jesus tells me, the, keep my commandments, and what is his commandments? To love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, your strength, and love your neighbor like you love yourself. I'll be a good disciple if I keep those. Continue, starting with verse 5. And I set before the sons of the house of the Rechabites pots full of wine and cups, and I said unto them, Drink ye wine. But they said, We will drink no wine. For Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us, saying, Ye shall drink no wine neither ye nor your sons forever. Neither shall you build house, nor sow seed, nor plant vineyard, nor have any. That's cultic. I mean, that's a little on the cultic side, don't you think? Telling them not to drink wine. <laughs> Telling them don't build a house. Don't sow seed. Don't plant a vineyard. That's a little cultish, cultish I think, a little bit. Go ahead. But all your days. To tell them to dwell in a tent that you may live many days in the land which you are sojourners. Thus we have obeyed the voice of Jonabad, the son of Rechab, our father, in all that he charged us. I wish I had a church like that when I told my people to don't do that for their own sake, to don't do that as unto the Lord, to don't do that because you are going to be enticed to sin against God. I wish that when I told my folks not to do something, that they didn't do it or wouldn't do it. Unfortunately, I don't have a perfect testimony. I have some that have and some that have not. In Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1 through 6.
Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him who appointed him, as Moses also was faithful in his house. Every religion, cult, sect has someone, a man over the house. So people say, well, I don't, I don't need a man over me because I got Holy Ghost. Well, your life doesn't show Holy Ghost. Your life shows you need a man over you. But that's fine. I'm good with that, too, because I try not to meddle in other people's affairs. Uh, if, if the, I, I come out of the woodwork when you come over here and meddle in minds because I'm not bothering you. I'm, you do you. But however way you look at it, however way you want, you know, oftentimes people, you know, I'm, I'm Pentecostal, I, I speak in tongues, and, uh, you know, I try to, if I'm led of God, to try to uh, have that experience replicated in other people who I think might want a richer experience with God. At least I think it's a richer experience. But when someone said, no, no, I'm not interested, and you think I'm, I, I'm not, I don't do, when I was a young Christian and I didn't know any better, I'll be trying to make somebody get something that I thought was good for them. It was good for me. I'm, I'm going, but I, I get ready to say, and I'm gonna say, little homie, don't do that anymore. I, don't, I, I, I leave people alone. I, if you don't want whatever, fine. If if you want to go, you can go. If you want to stay, you want to stay. What you can't do, which you can do a lot of things in my church, because where the spirit of God is, there's liberty. But what you can't do. Is practice sin, see? Because I, the, the cult that I came out of has legalized almost every sin. Almost, I might be almost all of them. Maybe, maybe one might be n not legalized. But almost every sin has been legalized. The problem is people want to come with their woke selves and come into your church and say, well, I have liberty and, and it is legal for me to practice sin for so many reasons. And I have to tell you, you can't do that in this cult. <laughs> you, now, we're all sinners, though. Mm -hmm. See, we're all sinners, and there's no doubt about that. I, 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 I sin today, to be honest with you, with my mouth, with my husband. <laughs> we're all sinners. I get that. I don't want that as a practice. Mm -hmm. I don't intend to practice it. And that's not even one of the sins that's actually written in Scripture. It's just not a good idea for me to do that. So we get, we get that. But what you can't do is practice what God says is sin. Because other people say, you know, that's not sin anymore. But God says it's sin. And as long as God says it's sin, it's sin. And it can't be practiced. So if that makes me a cult leader because I don't allow people to practice sin, then I guess I'm a cult leader. Continue. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who hath built the house hath more honor than the house. So Jesus is has more glory because it's his house. <laughs> Continue. For every house that is builded by some man is built by it's some by man. It's by built by some man. So people say, well, I don't want to be under a man. But God is the one that decided that would be the order of things. I, I scream inside of me to this day, I scream, I don't want to be under a man. <laughs> but that's the order of God. See, so I have to find my place. If I want to be pleasing to the Lord, I have to find my place and get in my place and trust God that he knows what he is doing. In Matthew 16, verse 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Now, why would the Lord go and do that? He, he said, this is my church. I'm the, 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 the man that's got more honor than the house and all of that. He could just be some invisible force 
working in everybody's life, you know. Ding, 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 ding. No, but you know what he choose to do? Put a man over his, his, his turn because that's the way God wanted to do things. I'm good with that. In 1 Corinthians 12, starting with verse 2 through 6. You know that you were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols. What? You, that's kind of, kind, of, kind of mean, Paul, to say that you, you were carried away by, you Gentiles were carried away by your, your dumb idols. That's kind of mean, however you were led. Therefore, I made known to you that no one speak it by the Spirit of God caused Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord, ha, 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 except by the Holy Ghost. Jesus is master of my life. That's why I get into the position he wants me to be in, in a man, on, under a man, in a church. That's how he rolls. There are diversities of gifts but the same spirit. There are difference, uh, differences of ministry, but the same Lord. So the Lord is Lord of the ministries. The Lord is the Lord of the churches that confess by their life and their testimony that Jesus is my master. Not, you see, because when you say Lord, you don't understand all the implications of that. But the people that declare that Jesus is their master are speaking by the Holy Ghost. Because only the Holy Ghost can make Jesus master of your life. If he's not Lord or master of everything, then he's not Lord at all. So you can't give a little piece here and a little piece there, and then you say, Jesus is my Lord. The devil is a liar. All my life belongs to God. Do I waver sometimes? Am I scared sometimes? Do I think sometimes I'm going to draw back because I can't do it anymore? But Holy Ghost is on the inside of me up in here. And he said, you can and you will. Let the weak say they're strong in the power of your might. Matthew 12, verse 30 through 34. He that is not with me is against me. And this he- is what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you're not with me, you're against me. Continue. And he that is gathered not with me scattereth abroad. So if you're not uh, bringing together, you're tearing apart. So some people are not content unless other people is at least as miserable as they are. So when they're miserable, they come to scatter. They come to talk about the leader. You know, it reminds me of uh, Gunsmoke. You know, you, some of y'all probably... Uh, from time to time, I watch Gunsmoke because there's actually nothing else to watch. And it's black and white, and I don't know. Uh, I watch Gunsmoke, and every now and then on, the, on Gunsmoke, you can, and I'm telling my age too, I know, but anyway, uh, some person that grew up in town or knew that Matt Dillon had a reputation for law and order and keeping the peace, and, and he would get rid of the... Uh, the, the riffraff, if you will, that came to town and, and tried to take over his town and impose their leadership. So you, he would, from time, every now and then you have an episode like that where someone said, you know what? I, I'm old enough now to take him on. Uh, that's what they say. They said they've been practicing in the back with their six shooter, I guess it is, and, you know, hitting cans. <laughs> A can is not a person, but anyway, they kid, they're hitting cans, and, and they said, you know what? In order to cement my little reputation, I'm going to go into Dodge and take on the big boys, Matt Dillon. And Matt Dillon faithfully put them out. <laughs> Matt Dillon faithfully take them out. 
that's what people do when they get full of themselves. Mm -hmm. You see, and they they talk about the person that's in in the leader, the cult leader, and say that individual is full of themselves. But then they go around other people telling other people, I'm going to take him on. He ain't all that. I've been practicing with my six shooter on the cans. I'm going to take him out. Second Timothy chapter 2. Starting with verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to That's teach my others job. also. <laughs> That's my job. The things, to commit things over to faithful men. Continue. So I'm going to read continue because I'm running out of time. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Evil happens. Mm -hmm. Stuff happens. Negativity happens. People talk about you. People reject you after doing good. People betray you. Then they go around and talk about all your faults and weaknesses, which you are privy to because you watch the person, but the person is just a man or a woman trying to do a little something, something for the Lord. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who are listing him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he completes according to the rules. Verse 7, consider what I say and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ is of the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble just with that. That he was raised from the dead. And in him we have eternal life. And there's a judgment day coming. Where we all will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And we at that point would tell him. What did we do with our salvation for him? Verse 10, Keturah. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. In Numbers chapter 12, starting with verse 1 and 2. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses. There he go, that Moses. He's a big-time cult leader. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to move against him because they didn't like the fact that he was commanding the masses. Maybe he didn't ask for their two cents worth. You know, sometimes people are offended because they think that the, the leader, the cult leader in this case, the man of God, the woman of God, the priest, needs their assistance. And all they need them to do is find a job in the church, maybe like cleaning out the bathroom. That will greatly assist not only the pastor, the cult leader, the minister of God, it will also benefit the whole church. So they come before um, Moses, and they say to him, They said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only to Moses? Hath he not spoken to also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses... They said, the man... He heard it. And it says, for clarif to move on, to make another point. Now, the man, Moses, was very humble because he knew they were talking about him before they talked about him. Now, that's humility. When you know somebody's talking about you and you don't say anything and you continue them to treat them in the way that honors God. See, that's humility. That's admiration. That's in, uh, when people are devoted to the pastor or the leader. 
uh, people are offended. Some people, what well, he shouldn't get all that attention. He shouldn't get that gift. He shouldn't get that big fat Cadillac that's sitting outside the church. What business is it of yours? You're not concerned about, you're concerned that you don't have a big fat Cadillac sitting outside the church. That's what that's about. It's called covetousness, by the way. But that's the deceitfulness of sin. So after Jesus was crucified and resurrected, a new religion or cult called the way appeared on the scene in Acts chapter 9, verse 2. And desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way. That was in the way. They didn't know what to call him. <laughs> they call him because Jesus had said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. And so people begin to notice that a crowd or group of people were growing that adhered to the way. And as far as the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the existing religious parties of Jesus' day, as far as they were concerned, it was a cult. <laughs> That's how it works. Any new thing. When uh, the Baptists started baptizing with full immersion, that was a cult. <laughs> When the Pentecostals started speaking in tongues, that was a cult. That's how that worked. So here it is, this new cult. And Saul, who became Paul, later became the apostle to the Gentiles, who would be converted to this new religion or cult. He moved from one cult to another one. But I moved out of the cult of the world, and I don't ever want to go back because... God has set me free. Because where the spirit of God is, there's liberty. And there's no liberty in the world. You either ship up or you are declared it's weird, old-fashioned, something's wrong with you. You're not with the in crowd. So the broad way, 50 million people are on that. But the narrow way, not many beyond it. So he was convinced to join the way, the new cult in town. Acts 9, verse 3 through 6. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he said, fell to the ground, heard a voice, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Then he said, who are you, master? Then the master said, I am Jesus. I am Jesus. What convinced him to join? The light that came from the revelation of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13 through 25. He got a revelation, but the revelation grew. He didn't get it all at once. He didn't get it all out because light is shining in darkness. And so uh, initially you want to hang on to darkness because you know the light will bring with it change. That you have to change who you are who you listen to, what you do, where you go. And we don't like that kind of change. We don't want to change. And so Peter, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Saul, who became Paul, knew that there was going to be a change in his light that came from the light. And it says in verse 13, therefore gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. There's a grace, and that grace is coming to an end. Look at the world around you. Sin and the manifestation of it is in the church. It is taking a seat along with us. It comes to encourage us to worship God in our darkness. 
It says the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not conform yourself to the former lust as in your ignorance, but he who has called you is holy. You also be holy in all your conduct. That's old fashioned. That's cultish. That's cultish to be holy. Are you for real? Don't nobody do that anymore. Do they? In all your conduct, because it's written, be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father, who without partiality in the cult that you're in, judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received in the world by traditions from your father, from the, from the biggest cult, the world in a systemic system to turn us away from a living God. But with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, he indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope would be in God since you have purified your souls. And here we go to the word again, obeying. Because when you don't obey, you set yourself up to be deceived by the sin that's in you and it's in me. I'm no different when I don't obey the truth. The sin gets an opportunity to take hold. We have to be honest with ourselves and come to the light. Obeying the truth through the spirit and sincere love of the brethren. If you love me, Keep my commandments. Love me and love the brethren. Don't hate the very people that extended their hand to you when you were down. And now that you're up or think you're up, I guess it is your opportunity. In sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever, because all flesh is as grass. And all the glory of man is the flower of the grass. The grass withers and the flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And it's old religion. Speaking of Saul, who became Paul in Philippians chapter 3, 5 through 11, he had all the credentials. You know, I left the world years ago. I gave up everything. I gave up my job. I gave up my law status. I gave up my rights. And I went into a ministry. And in that ministry, I had no reputation. And I had to learn to live by faith, trusting God. So Paul is going to leave his reputation in Philippians 3, 5 through 11. And he, verse, I'm, yeah, 5 through 11, quickly, please. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. What things were gained to me? He count are- as loss. Why? To come into a cult where the leader was Jesus Christ. He came into a cult to leave one that he had a reputation in, to have no reputation, to be betrayed and ridiculed and rejected and beaten. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 16, through 33. I say again, let no man think me a fool, if otherwise yet as a fool. I'm sorry, Katura. I thought I'm going to read that in the living, just for clarification, starting with verse 16. This is Paul talking about this new cult he's in and the things that he suffered 
being in that cult. There is no reputation. There's not people in there that necessarily like you or even love you after you have done good. So he's talking again. I say, don't think that I'm a fool to talk like this, but even if you do, listen to me as you would to a foolish person while I also boast a little. Such boasting is not from the Lord, but I'm acting like a fool because it said don't boast. But he said, I'm, I'm going I'm to talk like a fool right about now, and I'm going to talk about me. And since others boast about their human achievements, I will too. Because we don't mind when we, the cult in the world that we came out of, that people sit and talk about themselves day and night. We gladly listen to them. Because they are idols. They are gods. They are reputation. And they, and they are our excuse not to serve the Lord. After all, and since others boast about their human achievements, I will too. After all, you think you are so wise, but you enjoy putting up with fools. You put up with it when someone enslaves you, takes everything you have, takes advantage of you, takes control of everything, and slaps you in the face. I'm ashamed to say that we've been weak to do that, the stuff we put up in the, in the cult of the world in order to get advantage, in order to save our little reputation, in order to get a, a man that we want if you're a woman or a woman that you want if you're a man, the stuff that we endure because it works for us. But whatever they dare to boast about, I'm talking like a fool again. I dare to boast about it too. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they descendants of Abraham? So am I. If I say I'm the son of God, if I say that angels talk to me and I visit the high court of God and saw Jesus, you offended, but you listen to the fools of the world talk their foolishness. So am I. Are they the servants of Christ? I know I sound like a man, man, but I have served him far more. I have worked harder, have been put in prison more often, been whipped times without number, faced death again and again. Five different times, the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea, I have traveled on many long journeys. I have faced dangers from rivers and from robbers. I have faced dangers from my own people, emphasis, the Jews as well as the Gentiles. I have faced danger in the city, in the desert, and on the seas. I have faced danger from men who claim to be believers but are not. I worked hard and long and doing many sleepless nights. I've been hungry and thirsty and have often gone without food. I have shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm. Then besides all this, I have the daily burden of my concern for all the churches. Why in the world would he leave the other cult? But he was looking for something. He was looking to be conformed to the very image of Christ. He was looking for a better resurrection. He wanted to know him and the power of his resurrection. He wanted to see him. He wanted to live with him. He wanted to please him. And he wanted to serve him. So we left the cult in the world and became disciples of the way with a cult leader named Jesus the Christ. So, Father, I thank you, bless you, praise you. The mercy endures forever. Thank you, O oh God. Let the weak say they strong in the power of your might. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen.